Whether esports is sports has been a matter of debate ever since the word esports emerged and gained popularity. According to researchers such as Seth Jenny, esports has many elements found in traditional sports. Whether esports is sports is partly a matter of opinion. An important factor would be to try and change the opinion of people. However, this is not necessary. Also, people seem to think that exercising and sports are the same thing. So the traditional sports can be related to exercise, but what comes to the definition of sports, exercise is only a small part of it. It can be said that esports is evolving with the help of traditional sports, and for the most part, it is a good thing. Esports athletes are in some countries recognized as real athletes or sportsmen by law. There's a rising trend in acceptance of esports gaming into real sports, and visas are granted under esports identifier. Institutions are also taking part of the rapidly growing trend that is interesting amongst young people. Robert Morris University was amongst the first to recognize esport as a varsity sport, supported by the athletics department offering gaming scholarships. And according to Wingfield, over 500,000 were given out in athletic scholarships. As a side note on esports games, games that are esports can be related to sedentary sports video games or not. Esports is not bound in definition by a specific genre of a game, and top esports games are not related to real life sports. Esports games, as we know, can be related to simulating real life situations, such as attacking a specific location in Counter Strike, or it can be pure fantasy, as is seen in League of Legends. It is important to highlight what are the academically accepted definitions of sports. Um, the practices of esports can then be compared to these traditional definitions of sports. In practice, this means that whether esports can be considered as sports depends on how sports is defined. Sports definitions and characteristics include play, organization, competition, skill, physicality broad following, and institutionalization. Now, play forms the foundation for all sports. According to Gutman, play is a voluntary, intrinsically motivated activity, which is performed for fun or enjoyment. Esports fulfills this category, even though competitive video gaming is far more than just mere child's play or random fan activity. Even though play and video games are usually associated as not being serious, esports to many people is very serious activity. Gaming as a word may also be perceived to be lower level than sports. There may be a shift on people's minds and thoughts. What gaming is really depends on the person asked. Organization, uh, according to Suits, sports are goal-oriented activities, adhering to rules, and as Gutman already stated, sports are organized and governed by rules. Esports games are organized with rules. Tournaments have timetables, which are usually flexible as games do not have predetermined length. Games are selected beforehand and are played with competitive in-game rule setting. Players practice according to the competitive rules and must follow tournament guidelines and will be penalized when breaking them or by cheating or other misconduct. All sports involve competition. There needs to be a counterpart against which to, well, compete against. In esports, this is another player or a team. Uh, competition must also include a winner and a loser. Esports involves a very intense competition throughout the world with the help of the internet infrastructure. Competition drives people to exceed their physical and mental limits to overcome their opponents. Esports is seen as sedentary, and whether physicality plays a role in winning in esports is debatable. Esports is mentally more straining, but sometimes competing in esports can break a sweat. 
Physical well-being may reflect on mental well-being and it is thus important factor in esports even though the gaming situation itself doesn't seem physically demanding. Skillful play where chance or luck is not the sole reason of winning is a necessity in sports. In esports, the player needs a skillful coordination of the game character. A lot depends on the design of the game. Uh, this means, for example, in Counter-Strike, the player is usually rewarded by winning in-game situation with fast reflexes, good manual dexterity, and excellent hand-eye coordination. This was stated by Jacobson and Pargan. A successful esports player, according to Hemphill, must also possess comprehensive knowledge and skills related to game sense, including tactical and strategic judgment to solve the game problem. Esports players and community usually talk about micro and macro. There's also a changing metagame, which affects players' decisions as well. Especially StarCraft, alongside with other real-time strategy games, require good micro and macro control of the game. In RTS games, macro relates to understanding the game in the form of, for example, resources and map control, and micro to commanding units in combat situations. Overall, becoming an esports professional, esports athlete is very marginal and requires a huge amount of skill. Requirement for sports is that skill is physical, meaning that controlling your game controllers such as mouse and keyboard requires physical skills. It is generally believed that sport must consist of physical contests and it is debatable whereas Interacting with a mouse and keyboard is enough physical activity by sports definition. Arguably, for example, in chess, which is a sport, by the way, moving the chess piece to a certain location is a physical activity. But some researchers argue that it is not enough for the activity to fulfill sports requirements. In basketball, throwing the ball requires a certain manner and execution when the ball is thrown such as the timing of the jump and throw. Whereas moving the chess piece or pressing a control button um, doesn't really matter how the piece is moved or how the button is pressed in esports. Traditional sports are usually related to gross motor skills and fine motor skills, and through masterful usage of both, a top-tier performance can be achieved. Ross motor skills associate more with athletic activity. Traditional sports also relate to face-to-face -face aggression, power, and body contact, which is these are the elements that are missing in esports, but they are replaced with virtual violence. There's also a very clear difference in contrast of physical reality and virtual reality when it comes to skill building. For example, a gymnast trains for years to gain control of his or her entire physique, physical being, with the risk of an injury. Whereas in esports, the avatar of virtual character can even die multiple times without any harm to the player. Esports players may sustain long-term injuries to their wrists, back, or hearing. So saying that you cannot injure yourself by playing esports is not completely true. However, it is less likely to be seriously injured playing esports or esports related games. The mainstream society may see video games as the antithesis of sport. This is because perhaps research shows that sedentary screen time is linked with obesity and decreased exercise. However, esports teams usually have a detailed plan for players which includes also physical exercise. As your body is content, your mind is at ease, and it helps you focus during the gaming sessions. With the absence of gross motor skills, the general public may find it hard to accept esports as real sports. A sport must move beyond a game that is merely a local attraction or a bad, and must have broad following. Given the numbers asso associated with esports players and fans, it can be said that esports is doing fine on this sector. Teams, tournaments, leagues, prize monies, management and sponsorship agreements are on the rise. As discussed before, esports communities have developed thanks to the internet and it's a very global market area. 
For example, League of Legends World Championship viewer number reached 100 million in 2019. As a statement, eSport has multinational reach and broad followership. Institutionalization refers to an activity having a long history with developed and standardized rules. Formalized game learning, developed expertise in coaches, trainers, officials, and governing bodies. The popularity of esports is undeniable, but the stability in institutional organization and regulation are still unproven. Can be argued that with such large international esports competitive presence, it would logically indicate the existence of well developed governing bodies that oversee rule creation, standardization, and competition. But this is not the case. In traditional sports, there are governing bodies such as IOC, USOC, and so on, working independently, sometimes even competing. And it is very different from the esports industry. Esports industry's rapid growth has spurred several competing organizations with their own championship events, even leagues. Esports governing bodies are private companies owned by private investors. Esports needs to be recognized by sports and other associations for efficient management of esports and its institutionalization. Game developers usually set the rules for their games and bigger tournaments for the most part. Since the meta game is changing and games are constantly updated, the rules of the play are altering. One good point can be found in literature. How do you spell esports? There is no common term or rule on spelling esports. There's a lot of variants. For example, it can be called cyber sports, can be gaming, e-gaming, esports with a dash in between or with a capital S. More academic research on different contexts within esports is needed as well. In conclusion... Esports includes a lot of traditional sports elements, such as play and competition. Esports games also are organized with rules. They require skill and have a broad following. It seems that esports lacks physicality, gross motor skills, and proper institutionalization. It may be that someday we will see these elements as well. However, the gross motor physicality may be far in the distant future. Clearer institutionalization may arrive sooner. It all comes down on shaping esports in the minds of the majority of the society.